you so much for joining everyone. I'm, I think I'm going to do that at the beginning of all of them now. If you guys can just like give us a little wave to start us off. That's really nice to see that you're all here and engaged. Um, my name is Hannah and I work with Backstage and uh, this is part of our ongoing digital slate of content that we've been doing since March, um, which I'm sure is going to continue in some capacity, but you know, uh, our restrictions are sort of... Um, lifting on us so um we'll see how we go but today we're very lucky to be joined by Manuel Puro um and uh, we're going to be taking your questions that you have Manuel's worked in the industry for uh 24 years I think it was that I saw is that right yeah you know what somebody the other day somebody called me a veteran says oh you're a veteran of the in the industry and it really it, it kind of like it took me a moment to go oh my god am I really a veteran I still feel like a kid I still feel like the new kid on the block but um yeah I suppose I am a veteran no uh, you know what I did it I did a tweet to th this morning just to remind people that this was happening and not veteran because I I, I associate that with somebody who's ra rather old and you're not but I was you. like expert titan like you really have worked in the industry for a long time and um in the way that you're working now with giving advice and with your program titan wait a minute did you say titan i <laughs> love titan yeah let's all say titan okay less of the veteran, less of the veteran more of the titan That's <laughs> well we're joined today by manuel fioro veteran no titan of casting um, and right. we'll be taking your questions so please do get them in i'm going to kick us off with a few questions just to get us started but um any questions that you have around casting um Mama is, is the best place person to answer them. So um, please do get them in, in the chat box and I will get to them as soon as I can. So yeah, thank you for joining us. How are you doing? Thank you for asking. Thank you for asking. Yeah, not bad, not bad actually. Yes, uh, sort of, you know, getting there like everybody, I suppose, just, uh, yeah, getting used to it. I'm, I'm kind of, um, I'm, I'm quite lucky. I live out in the countryside. So uh, I, I moved out of London about 10 years ago. I've got a couple of little kids. And so we decided to move out into the country. So actually lockdown has been quite um uh, yeah I, I i kind of it's it's been not as stressful as i imagine it has been for a lot of people where living in cities and living in different kinds of uh, environments we've got a lot of space and a lot of um you know i can see views and things i, I don't feel like i'm in close so I've, I've been very very lucky with all of that i think so oh um, that's so lovely yeah. hey, where, no, where are you based now then where do you live I'm, I'm actually i'm kind of near stratford upon avon i'm kind of uh, i'm in the cotswolds but kind of near stratford upon avon so that's my most actors know where Stratford upon Avon is. Oh, um, well, they should know. <laughs> yeah, it's tiny. I live in a lovely, tiny, tiny little village, and yeah, um, uh, yeah no, it's it's good. And so it's, I'm, I'm kind of close enough to London that I go in to do all my auditions and things in London when I need to. But it's nice to have a little bit of a break. And, yeah, um, really, yeah. really lovely. And like you said, especially now, I do feel for people living in London because it is quite. Um, it, it, well, I know the places that I lived in London and I, I would have felt very claustrophobic. Yeah. So I um, hope everybody's doing all right. Um, mm -hmm. How did it affect you when everything started shutting down? Did you, were you in the middle of anything that got cancelled? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I had a film that was about to start shooting that was like a, a week away from starting to shoot. So they just had to, it was filming in Ireland. And so they just had to, I mean, literally we'd done everything and they were just ready to start rolling the cameras, but we just had to, I mean, it was just shut down. So um, I'm sure that'll come back up, but then there's going to be all sorts of questions about um, availabilities of access and things, but we'll see, we'll see when that happens. And then, yeah, and I had another project and we were about to do our last round of auditions. We'd kind of got a short list um, and it was a lovely little project, but it's, a, it's and we had, um, but yeah, it was, it, we were down to that really great part where it was a, a beautiful leading role, but we didn't need a famous person. It's just a, we just needed a good actor. And so we were in the, the very final stages of meeting some people. So that's, um, that all got put on hold as well so we'll just have to wait and see if, um, yeah how that starts up again uh, and just now just the last few days yeah you're getting senses of people are trying to get things going or trying to just start making inquiries about certain things i think it's still a little bit early to to kind of give any really fixed dates but um but, you know yeah you can see everyone's kind of poking their heads above the uh, air yeah. you know just to yeah just to see and, um, and I, yeah, sorry I th no, I was just going to say, I think it's going to be probably a case of like, people are going to wait and see, like, if there's tried and tested people going into production and see what happens with those first few, because I know mm -hmm. a few productions that are going back in August and planning on September, but um, 
I, I think a lot of people are waiting to see what those go like. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And I think there's things like the soaps and things that are, are these kind of big machines that, and they have the resources and they have the, the, the you know, they're a family already. They've all been working together for, for, for ages. So I think there are a couple of projects like that, that, um, that yeah will go back sooner than just i work mostly in independent projects independent film projects and so they all get put together and then they all everyone kind of scatters afterwards and then everyone kind of gets put together for project by project but i think some of those kind of long-running soaps they'll be able to start filming a bit sooner yeah. and um, and then we'll like you say i think everyone is just kind of waiting to see what what's going to happen and and there's all these kind of bigger questions about insurance and things like that just how how insurance is going to work and who's you know whether yeah just lots of it's all the detail, all the kind of logistical detail that that, that um, needs to be ironed out. So, yeah. um, so yes, we we will wait and see. Well, fingers crossed, because um, yeah, I think we all need we all need our work to come back. Um, yeah. So, how did you? Um, I want to start just with how you got into casting. So, um, I had to look through all of your very long list of credits. I think there's like nearly a hundred on IMDb well, and if, there's others if you're well. a titan if you're going to be a titan in the business then you know you need you need a lot of credits um or a veteran oh, yeah and um, the um uh, yeah god how did I start in casting I have quite a long origin story so I, I probably shouldn't go into it um, all the way right now but it's um I mean it, it, it's the short version really it was it is completely it was completely random it wasn't something that I was kind of aiming for I, I knew I knew I wanted to work in the film business and um but I, you know back in the day back in the olden days when we didn't have internet uh, I didn't really know quite how to approach it but anyway it, it just, just um I suppose yeah the really short version is is that I did I did the usual thing and I got in touch with lots of different kinds of people and just tried to hustle like mad I didn't have any contacts and I didn't have a, a network of, of people and I um and I, I kind of came up with all sorts of weird and wacky ways of just trying to get attention I suppose and just kind of go look I'm a little bit different and I just want a job and like I said I didn't I didn't really understand I didn't care what kind of job I got I just wanted to work in, in films I was a big film fan uh, and it was just by pure coincidence that I managed to I wrote to a, a casting director and I didn't even know it was a casting director at the time I um it, it, I mean it was so long ago that like I said there's no internet there were no kind of reference books so the only reference book I had was the yellow pages and um uh, the yellow pages in London and so I I, I used the, the the yellow pages which is a telephone directory and under f for film there was a little section for film and they had about seven or eight pages worth of entries and so I I that was my kind of my main resource was just like I'm going to write to every single person here apart from the ones that were really obviously not not to do with the movies there were some under film they still had stuff like photo processing so if, if you had um holiday photographs you could send them to these various things and I thought that's not what I want I want I want to work in the movies and so I um yeah I I, I kind of had lots of different ways of getting in touch with people and then I um and just by pure coincidence uh, I, I wrote to a, a casting director and like I said I didn't even know it was a casting director until I went in to meet that person and um uh, uh, you know, and, and yes, and then I kind of got to know that there was actually a job of a casting director, and I, uh, uh, yeah, and I kind of I seem to have a knack for it, so it was um, so I kind of stuck there. I mean, I have quite a long, it's sort of a bit convoluted because it was my first my first proper job was in casting, and um, and after a few years, I I went and worked for an agent, and then I worked for a production company, and I, I did a few other things. So, um, but then eventually, I kind of circled back to to casting because. Um, you know, I didn't realise when I, when I first got my very first job in film and it was in casting, I didn't realise that was my place. That was really where I kind of fit into the whole thing. So I, I did kind of go around a little bit and check out a few other kind of jobs and a few other things in the business. And then eventually I came all the way back to, to casting. And then I've, um, and yeah, so I, I um, and yeah, that, that's me. Yeah. Wow. I find that a lot of people, if you if I ask that question, the casting directors, there's two options. It's either they were an actor or it was like a, a random, like fluky thing, or they were just interested in, you know, film and didn't really realize that casting was a job. And obviously like now casting is becoming finally um, much more recognized with BAFTA and hopefully, you know, um, the Oscars yeah, yeah. and one day. Yeah, no, that's great. Of course it's great. It's, it's, uh, yeah, no, it is. It's fantastic actually that uh, it's starting to get, get some recognition at least, uh, you know, it's, I mean, for a long time it's been, um, you know, we, we're, we're head of a department and we get really nice credits on movies. We get credits at the beginning of the film, like the director of photography and the editor and the costume designer. It's, uh, 
and we sometimes we get on the poster which is amazing so you can walk past a poster and see your name on it so it's um yeah it's really nice but it's nice that the award ceremonies are um are starting to recognize uh, you know recognize it as well yeah um, yeah, yeah it's good so um so talk us through a little bit about because um if, when you started in 1996 i believe um i'm sure a lot of things have changed in the processes for how you cast something um compared to now obviously with digital and you know the internet and all of those things so when you first started what did that look like was it just um phone calls with agents how did you sort of pull together your suggestions for a role yeah it was i mean yes it is obviously yeah it's really different we, we had um we had spotlight the directories physical physical books and um and every year there would be more and more books you know you would only get them once a year the, the, the book and every so often they would send you some amendments but i never really knew what to do with the amendments because you, you had these so you had these big thick books uh, spotlight books and um and like I said, every year there would there would be more and more of them, and so that was really one of the, your main resources. There was a lot. You can't. I kind of do miss those old days where sometimes you would spend. I mean, it sounds crazy now, but you'd spend you'd spend a whole afternoon, just literally flicking through Spotlight page by page, just looking at all the different photos, looking at and just kind of letting it all absorb. You know, just absorbing all the faces that you saw and kind of creating your lists like that. And then yes, there were a lot of agents on the phone sending through, um, calling through with suggestions. We used the fax machine a lot um fax machine was kind of the pinnacle of technology when, when i started so we would get suggestions sent through by fax um and we would fax out scripts and things like that we would send by fax but it was very um i think some of the younger people here will probably not even understand what a fax is and also just the the, the kind of the technology that that fax used to have this this very kind of crinkly uh, strange paper that it used to print on it was it was you'd have to be really really important or really, I mean if you were an actor with a fax machine that was like the, a big deal you would only be a top level actor would have a fax machine and then an even better proper a-list actor would have a fax machine that printed on normal paper because normally the, the paper on the fax machine was this heat sensitive paper on a roll and when when a fax came in it would be on this kind of weird rolly paper so um yeah, it was just it was just really really different, and you would you'd, you'd build up a list just by going through Spotlight and listening to agents, um, and there were a lot of couriers involved. Couriers would come round every day. Every day there would be, you know, you you would you, people would send over C, hard CVs every day. They would come by post, but they would also come by courier. So an agent would send suggestions for a particular role by by a bicycle courier that would turn up with a whole pile of CVs for different roles. Um, and then thank heavens all of that has sort of you know all of that has sort of changed over the years um and uh you know yeah all the way to, all the way to now where, where it's great everything's kind of digital and we can kind of ping things around and really we can, we can in a really very very quickly kind of reach a huge kind of audience in terms of letting them know what we're looking for getting suggestions back and then kind of managing the whole process we're, we're able to do a lot more now um obviously with the technology so um yeah it's been it's been good um wow. And I've, I've, I've in particular, I mean, I've, I've, because I'm, I'm a huge fan of self-taping, I'm a big, big fan of self-taping, and that has been a really interesting um, uh, development, and, it's, and it has kind of transformed the way I work. Uh, and I think actually now people, especially now with lockdown and with the virus and things, people have, uh, I think sometimes some uh, casting directors that may have been a little bit more resistant to self-taping or who may have used it as a secondary tool when they couldn't get an actor into the room, I think now they, that people are going to embrace it a little bit more and... Um, and kind of actually understand the real power of it because I think for a little while self-taping was always seen as a secondary option as something like that's not quite as good as getting the actor in the room and whilst I'm still a huge fan of getting the actor in the room um, that's for me is the kind of the, the final process I think using self-tapes is just a great way of of, um, of as a, it's a great first stage it's first you know really good first step and it's it's um it, yeah it just means we can see so many more actors and take we can take more risks in terms of just different types of actors and different type, levels of experience and um and just giving people a shot really letting people have a go at a particular role and then just seeing how they um see, see what they do with it um yeah so yeah it's, it's a much better it's it's yeah anyway it's it's um yeah i think that's been a really great development yeah for um, sure i th i think uh, it's um it's going to be interesting to see how it continues and in, in like how how much people are getting opportunities and like you know for yourself 
being outside of London and you know I'm outside of London most of the time as well so um that's going to be something which is going to be great for access for actors if they can't afford to live in London which I definitely couldn't you know when I first um moved over so um it's, it's all very good yeah yeah I actually think because I live out in the country I, I, that's kind of one of the reasons I really embrace self-tapes I thought this is great I'll use this thing called self-tapes and and try and see actors so I don't have to go into London quite as often and um and so it's and, and it's it is it's true it's kind of you don't really need to live in london and like i said it's not it's not about not having face-to-face -face auditions i still think they're really important i i, I never want to lose the face-to-face -face auditions that's the most fun bit of the job but um i think before getting to that point there were huge amounts of inefficiencies before in terms of um you know literally dragging actors from all over the country into into scheduled slots that where, where you know at, at that time you didn't know whether you were really even right for it how what their interpretation of the role was going to be and so sometimes you'd have actors coming from all over the country spending a fortune on trains missing out on real work day jobs that, that they used to pay the bills having to arrange childcare and all these kind of inconveniences just for them to walk into an audition room and within a few seconds kind of going oh no they're just not right and yeah. so we uh, hopefully with self tapes it all that, that's um yeah, eliminates all of that, all of that kind of inefficiency. So yeah. that when, when you do get invited in, it's kind of like we're, we're really at the sharp end at that point when you get invited into the room. And so, um, yeah, it's good. Amazing. So um, we should definitely get into some tips around self tapes, which we'll go on to in a second. But I just have a question about um, that whole process, you know, before we had the internet and casting platforms and things. Um, how about watching show reels? How did you how did you do that? Did, did people send VHS and DVDs and things? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the VHS. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So before when I started, I mean, there were no real show reels anyway when, when I, I started. I mean, there were. I guess some people may have had show reels, but we used to get every so often we would get instead of a show reel, you'd get a clip, and it would come on a big VHS cassette that again a courier would bring over. You'd kind of say, you'd, you'd, some, a courier would bring over. Uh, a big cassette that I would put into a machine and there would be a little note with the cassette saying please fast forward to 33 minutes and 14 seconds in and it would be something that would been recorded the night before from tv or somewhere and you, and you would put the physically put the thing in a machine I would fast forward it and you'd have to sit there and wait again I think some youngsters some digital natives will not understand that we this this was on an analog tape and so we would literally fast forward and it could take three or four minutes sometimes even yeah. just to fast forward 30 minutes into a particular program and then we would stop when the digital clock said all right that's it 33 minutes in and then we would watch a scene that an actor had done and that that was kind of the beginnings of showreels and then little by little again the fancier actors would edit these things together and then so that you would end up with a, a big tape just with one actor with various scenes and um uh, and then of course it all kind of evolves it's sort of strange because i now have a um I have a funny sort of relationship with showreels because I, I do see showreels as old technology. For me, they are that they're, they're part of the progression of things that we've done. And, and for me, a, a self tape has completely superseded a, a, a showreel. So I don't really watch showreels too much anymore. I watch little bits of them, and every so often I watch one all the way through just for the hell of it. But I don't normally want to, um, you know, either I'll know who the actor is already, so I won't really need to see the showreel, uh, or if I don't know the actor, then I don't want to be too influenced by a show reel um because it's just because you know sometimes i don't i don't know who directed it i don't know what the, the role really is and what the kind of how much money was involved in terms of you know how big a budget the, the, the production was and all these things so i don't really want to be judging an actor an actor's ability based on a show reel that that may not show them in their, their best light <clears throat> and also may not show them um being particularly right for the role i'm doing i i kind of watch a show reel just to um just to kind of get a physical idea of what an actor, how the camera captures an actor. Um, and uh, like I said, it's, if I'm going to spend two or three minutes in the company of an actor watching an actor, um, I would rather watch them doing a self tape for exactly the role that I'm looking for at that time, as opposed to watching um, two or three minutes of a showreel. Um, so yeah, that, it, it, for me, that's part of the progression of VHS cassettes. And then it was great when we had stuff online and we, then we had showreels online. And again, showreels were great when there weren't self tapes, but now we've got self tapes. And so, I think showreels have become, for me, just sort of older news. And um, <clears throat> and I know I'm pretty much the only person that's saying this at the moment, but I, yeah, I, I'm not too fussed by, by showreels and whether you've got a showreel or not. I'd rather just, you know, I, I, I want to see you do a self-tape on, on the, yeah, for the role I'm doing. Um, and then who knows what's going to come next? Maybe at some point, self-tapes will also um, stop, um, you know, stop being um, 
uh, useful or something else will will be better than a better than a self tape. I just recently part of lockdown. I just got myself a PlayStation Four. You know, right at the end of the life of the PlayStation Four, I got myself a PlayStation Four with the with the VR um, with a VR headset. Yeah. Uh, I used to, I've always I've loved playing games in the past, and uh, anyway, I, I like to dip in every every now and then into the games world and just see where where things are up there. You know, things are up to. But I've got the the VR headset, and it is absolutely unbelievable. It absolutely blows my mind the the um, the VR thing, and I've kind of researched how you could you, even with little cameras how you can create VR images, and I, I do wonder whether that might have something. You know, I'm not. Sure, I don't know whether yet, and there's probably not enough people with VR equipment. But it's um, when I've watched little bits of video with v VR, it's, it is extraordinary. It's, it's you do get a real sense of being in front of a person. It's it's um, it, it's just yeah, it is just it's it's uh, uh, yeah, it's mind blowing. So I do wonder whether that's going to be another uh, something that kind of takes over a little bit or at least takes over from things like this like zoom meetings that if we can do it a little bit more in vr if the director could be, be seeing a three-dimensional representation of an actor um performing and if, if you can kind of live stream that and kind of properly interact with each other um it really is amazing it has kind of blown my mind just having this uh, this headset on and just seeing what what's um you know kind of what's possible so um yeah watch this space i always have these kind of madcap ideas though i have to say i am um, because I think a few years ago I, I cast a 3D film, and I, I um, and we were we were doing the it was for a German director, and we were casting this this film, and people would walk in. It was back in it was quite a long time ago, and um, and people would walk into the audition, and, and immediately he would go, no, no good for 3D, and I'd be like, what? We haven't. How do you know? And he goes, no, because of the way their face is and this and that, and the 3D cameras won't capture it. And I said, oh god, well, you know, it would have been good to know this beforehand, and so I vowed to figure out a way of doing it at the time 3d films were really the rage and i ended up figuring out a way of doing these 3d auditions so that uh, a, a director could be in the room with the actor but i'd be using a special 3d camera to film the the actor and i had a special screen that the director could look at and see it in 3d so that we would all be able to see whether the actor genuinely did work in 3d or not and it i spent hours and i mean not hours months coming up with all these different i love technology and i, I spent hours and months trying to figure it all out and then finally, I got my system up and working. And of course, nobody was interested. Nobody cared about it. But it was, um, it was, uh, uh, yeah. I do love technology, so I do think this VR thing might, that might have, you know, that might come into all of our futures. Um, you're, um, you're definitely ahead of the curve. So I'm going to be keeping my eye on what you you're doing, so I know what's coming up because. Cool, uh, honestly, but even. Um, you know, even kind of travel, I've, I, I love travel, you know, technology and travel, of, of course, and I love films and things, but that's my job now. But my, my kind of outside interests are the technology and travel. And I, I'm, you know, heartbroken that I can't just get on a plane and travel wherever I want to at the moment. But I do think this virtual reality is going to be, um, yeah, anyway, we'll see, we'll see. We'll see what happens. And um, my, boy, my boyfriend has one as well. And he, uh, he's got a production company and they have, um, like different setups, but they have a really small camera, which is like a 360 camera. So yeah, yeah. Not too expensive, you know, I mean, obviously not for self, like whatever, you know, minimal things that we're doing right now, but um, uh, yeah, you could well be right. And that would be yeah, very yeah. interesting. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I had a look, that little 3D 360 camera, it's like they can get, get it, it's about 350 quid, which is probably a little bit too much just right now for me to kind of go, oh, I'll buy one just for the hell of it. But you just think, no, I mean, you know, that's incredible, and it's um, that they, yeah, they are just it's anyway, it is, it's uh, very it's cool. Very... We will see what happens. We will see. <laughs> so I wanted to um get onto self tapes because um we're talking about how important they are, and um especially now. So um we've spoken about the benefits, uh, which you're a good advocate for, and I fully agree with everything you're saying there. Um. What would you say would be a good self tape setup that actors should be thinking about? Yeah, I mean, it's the usual thing of just being having a really plain background and um, uh, and a well lit face, and um, and then you are in control of your self tape as an actor. So you, it's kind of up to you how. There's two big considerations. One is framing, so that's where you are in the frame. So I like it. I do like seeing a face fill that frame mostly i mean you've got to kind of be sensible about it but for most of the most of the time i really want to see an actor's face so i don't want them to be miles away from the camera uh, you know i don't want their face to be this tiny little circle within this entire frame that we've got here I, I i like the face to kind of dominate and then the second thing to think about always is eye lines is kind of like where are you going to place people in the scene so again i don't want to place 
I don't want an actor to place somebody over here um, because I, I, for me the most important thing is to see right into your eyes. I really, um, I'm always just keen to see, yeah, just into, a, into an actor's eyes. It's, it's, you know, they are the windows to the soul and it does kind of just help us um, kind of gauge whether you're telling the truth or not, whether you genuinely feel like you are the act, the, the, the character. And um, so I always just think it's, yeah, making sure that you choose your eye lines because that's down to every actor will pick up a scene and then you read the scene and you'll figure out how many scene participants are there in there is there just one person i'm talking to are there a couple of people i'm talking to where am i going to place them are th those eye lines going to be really clear are the eye lines very close towards the, the lens so that um uh, so that the, the casting people can always see my face clearly um and yeah and just kind of uh, try and have no distractions behind you so you can um like I'm in my room at the moment and there's, there's loads of stuff in the background, but I think because of the light is so bright on my face that everything in the back looks kind of dark, which is great. So, you, you know, that's, I, I, yeah, I'm miles away from any kind of wall, but that, that's reasonably dark and that's, that's not a bad background. And then, um, uh, but some people, yeah, some people have got kind of interesting little walls there. I'm looking at uh, Leonti, Leonti McCarthy. He's got a blank wall there behind. There you go. Uh, I mean, I can see the picture, but I'm, I think if you shifted things around, you would end up with a... Um, a pretty kind of blank wall behind you. I, I, I sort of miss the, um, uh, Kate Coulson, hello Kate. Um, you know, I can see all your books and things on the shelf and I would, and the guitar, and those are the things that I would be really curious about in a, in a real world cell tape. I would find myself zooming in onto that bookcase and having a look and sort of seeing. And I think actually it is interesting that now that everyone's doing these Zoom calls and uh, everyone's got used to doing all of this, there's a whole kind of industry now of, of people kind of talking about people's backdrops and you know normally now i'll sit with my wife watching the news or something and we're not interested in what people are saying instead we're looking at their backdrops going oh yeah they've got a corner there that's that's good and they've got a plant and that looks nice and they've got some books but you can't quite see what they are and and i think um people are sort of noticing all of all of that sort of stuff now but i um and it yeah it just goes to show look i can see so many really interesting backgrounds in people's houses but as soon as i'm looking at their backgrounds on a self-tape I'm not looking anymore at, oh my goodness, look at Amanda. Amanda's got all sorts of photos above the bed there. Brilliant. I mean, again, I would zoom in on that and just go, right, what are these all about? Um, and so as soon as I'm doing that, obviously, I mean, I'm kind of half joking. I'm not kind of creepy, you know, I, I probably, you know, <laughs> I'm not really like, oh, then I get my infrared x-ray vision special <laughs> thing that I've got. And I can even look inside people's drawers and in their wardrobes. It's brilliant. No, I can't do any of that. I genuinely, I can't, of course. But, um, yeah, I do. In a way, I kind of miss the old days of self tapes where literally people would shoot them just wherever. And it was so fascinating to be able to see into their houses and things. But now I think it's just better. Yeah. Anything that's just really plain. Um, keep all the ten all the attention and focus just on you. Um, uh, yeah, what, about, so. um, what about um, what people are shooting on? Um, have you got any tips around, you know, should people have a tripod? Should people be investing in any sort of camera or, um, you know, what? Definitely, um, yeah, definitely a tripod. But no, I think most people will have their phones and use their phones. And I'm a big fan of that. I think you can do such, I mean, a, a modern phone is just an incredible bit of technology and you can pretty much do everything you, you need on the phone. You can uh, film yourself and then you can edit yourself and you can even compress your self tape and then send it on to somebody. So you can do everything from the phone. Um, so that's good. If you want to use a fancy camera, that's fine. I think a lot of actors sometimes want permission to go and buy a nice camera. Um, but I don't think you need a fancy camera, but it's, it, listen, go and get one if that's what you want to do. But definitely a phone is, 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 is okay. But yes, definitely it should be steady. The, 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 the image should be um, steady. It, you, you, people get a bit queasy with um, handheld kind of footage. It just feels a little bit weird. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I think definitely, um, so yeah, a phone is usually good enough. I, in my actual real life face-to-face -face auditions, I use the oldest camera. Well, not really the oldest camera, but I use, um, uh, God, here we are talking about 3D cameras and 360 cameras. In my real auditions, I use an old, uh, it's, it's called a DV camera, and, and it has this yeah. little DV tape. Um, and it's from, yeah, and I use, it's a beautiful little Sony um, Handycam that I've got. And it's... Um, and like it's probably from the 1990s god it probably is from when i started it's like oh i, I uh, but it has a beautiful image and it, it creates these beautiful um uh, uh small files it's not so it's not anywhere near high definition it's standard definition but it it, it works just perfectly well and it's um you know by the time you compress something or by the time a director watches something either on a phone or a tablet or even on their laptop the the, the image quality is absolutely fine so i kind of think that 
you know, if I use that in my real life and I've always used that, that same camera and I've got a couple of different, you can't buy these cameras new anymore. So I've got, I, I buy them old off um, eBay. Whenever one comes up, I've got a little alert uh, set up. And so when this, the particular model that I like comes up, I buy it. So I've got, I've always got a few spares, but it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a br brilliant camera and it's, but it's nowhere near. I mean, I, I would say it's probably got a tenth of the capabilities of most people's phones uh, the, the kind of lenses and, and the quality that comes out of most people's most people's phones so um yeah the the uh, uh yeah you don't need any fancy stuff i think everybody's pretty much got everything that they need um yeah. you know everything that they need i think sometimes you may need to invest in lights um again i'm i'm a big fan of people not spending too much money but you you can now buy these led lights that are fantastic um uh, just off amazon or something for 30 pounds or you know 30 dollars even you can buy yourself a, a reasonably good set of lights um, but you don't even need to do that if you if you don't want to you can still just use lamps and natural daylight and things like that um, you know you can just use literally old lamps to maybe take off um, you just have a, a cool white bulb in there or something and um and, and yeah just fiddle around you can all I, I'm, I'm always encourage actors to kind of fiddle around wherever they are in terms of just experiment with the lighting um, and get your self tape set up kind of do it now when you're not when you don't have a self tape to do do, yeah. do it when you're kind of relaxed I mean uh, hopefully everyone's got a bit of time at the moment um, actually I shouldn't say that because I, I, I hate when people assume that everyone's got loads of time because it's locked down and all of that because I know I'm really really busy and it's um, you know I don't have loads of time anymore but it's um, but yeah when you before a, an actual self tape comes in work out your own um, set up do, do it all kind of now when you're kind of calm and relaxed and you've got a chance to experiment and then um, and then when the self tape comes you'll know exactly where you're going to film and how you're going to set things up and you're not panicking about that side of things yeah definitely and um, so uh, talking about lockdown and um, how people have been sort of um, developing what their, their skills and setups and things like that and um, we um, so the reason why me and Manuel are in touch right now is because we did an article on Backstage, which was about um, your uh, 21 day acting habit course. So we had a little chat before we came on here and I know a lot of actors, you know, we've been doing these, this digital slate of, um, of content and they've been, it's gone down so well. People are really, you know, taking to it and trying to learn new things and, um, and see, see what's about. But the, you've started the 21 day acting habit yeah, tell us how you started it, why you started it, what it is. Give us a full breakdown. Yeah, it was um, yeah, it was about three, sort of three and a half years ago now, I suppose. And like I said, I've always had these kind of madcap ideas of certain things, and I like technology. I've always just been a fan of technology. And so, about three and a half years ago, I was um, I, 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 I um, I'd, I'd always had stuff on my website. I've, I've have a website, and when I um. I, let's go right back to the beginning. So I worked for a casting director, then I worked around the business around doing different things. And eventually it came time to be sort of set myself up as a casting director on, in my own right. And somebody that I knew said, oh, you should have a website. But this, this was probably about 12 or 13 years ago. And they said, oh, have, get yourself a website. And I said, well, casting directors, they don't really have websites. It's sort of, what would I put on there? And he was like, I don't know, you know, just get yourself a website, it's, it, it'll, it'll be good. So I just set up a really simple website. And then I started putting, um, just things on there that I, you know, how I run my auditions and how, learning lines and things that I, I thought were important. And, and I think at, at that time, there was still quite a lot of secrecy surrounded, surrounding casting directors and how they worked and what they expected of actors. And it was all this kind of dark mystery. And, and I always thought it was just, seem, it seemed really stupid not to kind of help actors understand what I would want when they came into an audition and how I run things. So I, I put lots of things on this, um, on the website, tried to give lots of advice, at least in terms of, just from my point of view. And then um, my brother-in-law is an athlete and he, um, and he was really successful, really good athlete. And he and a, and a really famous athlete decided to run, start some online courses. And so they were talking about that. And I went, oh, yeah, online like courses, that sounds interesting. And it, this was, like I said, maybe this was about four years ago. And um, but again, I, I didn't make any kind of connection. But there was just a moment, it was a, as usual, a sort of a light bulb moment of think uh, of, um, of kind of thinking, OK, I can, you know, I, I actually tried to do a self-tape course in the room. I I'd set up a, because I, I do love self-taping. I set up a self-tape course in the room, where, uh, and, and um, with a, I, I got ten actors and we all did stuff in in the room together. But I thought it wasn't very good because 
we were in a special room that had great lighting and we had really good strong internet connection and everyone had to bring in their computers and things and, and it was all a bit awkward and I just thought this is not how a self-tape happens a self-tape happens in people's houses or homes and sometimes on the road or hotel rooms or somewhere so kind of ha having a self-tape course in in the in somebody else's room sort of it didn't really make much sense to me you want to you want people to kind of learn how to self-tape in the environment that they're actually going to self-tape in uh, and that, so anyway I had that light bulb moment of thinking well, maybe I could do a course to do with self-taping and um, some kind of online course to do with self-taping and uh, you know that might work and getting access to help each other out and feedback and just you share everything just kind of be open about sharing what equipment you're using and what kind of lighting you're using and all of that and so um, uh, it, what it really was, I, I had a little light bulb moment. Of, uh, I took my son to play football and while he was playing football, I thought oh, it all kind of came together in my head. And then when I got home, I was able to kind of research and figure out how could I kind of implement the idea that I had. And I was able to set a, a, a rough version of it up very, very quickly. And um, uh, and then I, I yeah, and I, I got a whole bunch of actors doing it. Uh, with my website, I, I, uh, when, I, when I do face-to-face -face auditions, I like to have a real actor as a reader. Uh, and so on my website, I had people signing up to be readers, just a, just a very simple way through my website, I'll sign up. So I had this list of actors that were kind of signed up to my website. And I, I, so I sent them an email saying, oh, I've got this new course and a whole bunch of people signed up for it. And it was, it, it was just brilliant. It worked so much better than I ever thought. That first course was actually a 30 day course. It was, um, uh, I could, it, it, yeah, it was a 30 day course. Um, and, uh, and it, it just worked really from day one. I just thought, gosh, this is incredible. Watching the actors, just watch first seeing all the different, every actor does the same piece. So seeing every actor, all these different actors, different ages and nationalities and genders, all doing the same piece of material was just fascinating to see how everyone interpreted it and everyone made it their own. And then watching the actors kind of comment on each other and help each other out and do all of that kind of stuff was again it was just brilliant and, and the actors were all over the world and it was just like wow we're just bringing creating this community and bringing people together um it, it was just yeah I, I got really excited within a day or two uh, at, at the end of the 30 days I realized that was probably a little bit too long so I, I from then on it was the 21 day self-tape challenge um and then I started expanding other I, I, I think sometimes people didn't want to do the full 21 days so I came up with some short courses and various different different things and now it's um it's kind of grown into a thing where yes the 21 day challenge is still kind of going strong and um seems to be really popular and it's just a lovely journey i think that actors go on a, a real kind of creative journey and learn a huge amount about themselves and about their capabilities and what they can do because i think a lot of times people will get a role and go i can't do this this is outside my bracket but given a little bit of time they they upload something that's just incredible and, and really refreshing and, and just yeah it's just great and they make all these connections with other actors um and then I, yeah, I've got short courses. I've got like a, a self tape class, which is I think the the one that your um your journalist did, your, the, the did a, a just a short five day um, self tape class. And now I have a whole host. I've got this whole roster of casting directors from um, all over the world actually that that will run their own courses. These things called five day feedbacks. Um, and again, I have to, I mean, I have to say they 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 tell me that they love them because when you do a face to face workshop in you know a three hour workshop in London somewhere you know an actor might come in and do one piece or one little scene or one monologue and you get to talk to the actor and you redirect them and then that's that that's that's your that's the kind of the, the workshop but with the five day feedbacks that I do they um there's five very different roles and so every actor does five different roles over the course of five days and they get feedback every day from a, a top casting director and the casting directors themselves have just said it is a great kick up the bum to kind of be reminded how versatile actors are and to get a real sense of what an actor can do by seeing them doing a whole range of things um so it's uh, yeah so, so it, it's all going well on that side i, I love that it's um uh, i'm really proud of it i think I'm, I'm i'm just really proud that the 3d stuff didn't work and maybe the vr stuff won't work either but the acting habit is just something that seems to really hit with actors and hit with other casting directors yeah. um and uh, and yeah I, I, it's and it's great because honestly, it's something that I'm totally in control of, which is, uh, you know, on a production, obviously I've got a director I'm working with and a producer and there's all limitations and there's agents to deal with and everything. But on, on with the acting habit, it's just me and I can run it the way I want to run it. And I like to think that it, I run it in a, quite an ethical way. And um, with the pandemic coming, it's been great to be able to kind of offer things like pay what you can places on or all the courses and, and just, um, yeah, just keep everyone active and engaged and um learning stuff you know learning stuff yeah it's been a really it's been great for me as well you know it has it's kept me very busy 
over these last few months. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm really it's, grateful it's really for those. And I, I do know quite a few actors who have done it as well. So, um, and they've all said that it's been incredible, the 21 day. Um, so um, just to let people know where they can find out information on that, what's your website so people can have a look? Oh uh, yeah, it's just, if, always go to Puro Casting. So it's, uh, you know, my name is Manuel Puro, purocasting.com. And it's, um, it's kind of, you know, I'm a bit of a dinosaur. I'm not a dinosaur, but I just, I never really got on with Twitter or Facebook or any of these um, social media. I don't, honestly, the acting habit is my social media. So I don't tweet anything about it. It's, um, uh, it's just on my website, purocasting.com. And actually you'll see all the old articles that I wrote there about learning lines and doing this and doing that. And all of, I take so much of that and have kind of put it now into the, um, into the acting habit courses. Um, so I haven't really updated any kind of super duper new articles for, for ages and ages. But um, yeah, if you go on purocasting.com, there's a whole archive of articles, but then there's, there's information about the acting habit, the 21 day challenge, the cell tape class, and then also these things, five, five day feedbacks and these different courses. We're just about to start an American accent course as well that I'm really excited by. by. Um, and there's a voiceover course that's just beautiful. It's just a, an incredible, um, yeah, it's just, yeah, it, it's, it's harnessing the power of the technology, I suppose, and but also everybody's creativity. And it's, um, yeah, it all seems to meld together really nicely. So, yeah, it's good. Great. Um, Crispin has asked, has Manuel cast anyone uh, from those courses, from seeing tapes on those courses? Uh, yeah, of course. Yes. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, it's not I, that, that doesn't mean you have to do a course before I cast you. It doesn't, you know, it's but it's it's there's lots of actors have been through it now. And uh, uh, so, yes, actors have. Um, I have and other actors. I, in fact, if I'm really honest, I get at least uh, it, this sounds really show offy now. It's, it's like a humble brag or something. But every day I probably get at least one, possibly two or three emails from actors that are just the most beautiful emails that just make, make you, you know, that just um, I mean, they're just brilliant because they, they just they've got roles or they've got callbacks or they've got things and they're just really grateful. And they, they you know, and it's to be honest, it's not me. I, I don't I've set up this sort of framework for people to kind of figure out things on their own, I suppose, in a way or figure out how to do things or um, how to get comfortable with the camera. I sort of set up the framework, but it's, it's obviously it's a lot of the actor on their own, but it's, it's so fulfilling. So it's not just my projects. I know that actors are getting um, work and getting seen. Um, uh, you know, but uh, honestly, whether or not it has anything to do with the course or not, I don't know. But I, I, I get these beautiful emails from actors, um, and it is, it's, it's just, yeah, it feels very fulfilling. And like I said, the casting directors that I work with, um, I know a few of them have already um, brought people in that they've met at workshops, but that's not oh, it, clearly, it's not you're not doing the workshop or you're not doing one of my things to get an audition, it's not, it doesn't work that way. But you know, we, we're always interested in meeting new actors and seeing new faces. And this is just one of those ways that you can do that. Yeah, brilliant. Um, could you give us a couple of examples of casting directors who have you have worked with? Because you have mentioned that you've worked with a few through these courses that you do. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, at the moment, we've got people like, um, uh, yeah, Carmel Cochran's doing them, who's, who's just absolutely brilliant. She's so refreshing. Um, and she she casts, you know, the end of the, the end of the yeah. world. <laughs> uh, um, we've got, um, just coming up, we've got a uh, um, Victoria Beatty's doing one that she's she's doing her first one this weekend um, and she's um, I mean she's just got loads of experience and at the moment she's working with um, Leo Davis and um, uh, and Lissy Holm and so she, she's been, so she's been working on Black Widow you know the, the kind of new Marvel film Black Widow uh, we've got um, and, and I've got people I've had Natalie Sharon and Mathilde Snodgrass from France do them there's a Danish casting director called Anders Nygaard that that's, that's, uh, does them. Lucy Lennox, who's kind of a legend in Spain. Um, she, she casts lots of really great stuff in Spain. She's been doing them. Uh, I've got Irish casting directors. I've got a few Americans. I'm always trying to find more and more people to, to kind of uh, jump in. I've got Jemima McWilliams, and, uh, who works for Debbie McWilliams, that, uh, coming, just coming off all the Bond films that you, they do them. So it's, um, yeah, it's just really nice. It's a really nice, um, it, it's a nice little gang of, of um, yeah nice gang of, of casting directors and it's just uh yeah it's just really good. like i said not everything works out well in terms of you know some things are that never don't quite hit the mark but i, th I think the acting habit is, is um yes yeah, it's, it, it's it seems to have hit the mark with not only the actors but also with some casting directors they, they kind of see the appeal of it and they um they enjoy running their their courses and meeting new actors and seeing all these different kind of approaches 
Yeah, great. Um, so I'm going to get into some questions from our audience and I will get to as many as I, as I can. Um, Amy has asked, um, I've heard a lot of casting directors say that we like strong and bold choices, but how can you decide which choices right? Yeah, I think that's... Um you know that's the age-old question but you have to go you have to just kind of get your you curate your instincts and use your instincts and to be honest not every role needs a bold choice so you have to i think an actor will be given a certain amount of information sometimes it's a lot and sometimes it's a very little but with whatever information you're, you're given you have to come up with your own judgment as to what what the character is and you must try and do it yourself and not sort of second guess what somebody else is, is looking for. So I, I do think sometimes it's the wrong question to ask. An actor will always say, you know, how can I, how can I stand out? And it's, it's just the wrong question. You, you, you want to take each character and each role individually, not just have a set of rules that you're going to do. Oh, I'm always going to be bold. I'm always going to do this. I'm always going to do that. It always depends on what is, what is the character, what is really required. And you can only do that. You have to just treat every single role as completely fresh, completely new. And, um, and read everything that you can about it, research who the writers are, who the director is, uh, and, and just use all that information um, to, to come up with whatever you think instinctively is right, uh, without, honestly, without trying to think, well, what are they really gonna be looking for? Because we just don't know, we don't know until we see it. Uh, you know, we might say that we know, and we might, a director might have a really clear idea in their head of what they want, but my job is to, is to kind of show them a, a range of things. It's not just to, um, if I'm really honest, it's not just to pander to them and say, okay, well, I'll just give you what you want. I, I absolutely will show them a few examples of what they want, but it's really exciting to show them stuff that they haven't even thought of and that they, they respond to that, directors respond to that far more than, than just kind of following their, their instructions because it, it just expands their imagination as well. So I, th I think actors just have to, you have to kind of get confident and understand that, um, yeah, just trust your own instincts. I think again, so one of these kind of a, a, a little secondary effect from doing one of these courses is by seeing, uh, because you're all doing the same role, you get to see all these different interpretations of the same role. And it just, it highlights just how amazing actors are and that, you know, you can have, you can see 50 examples of the role that you could cast every single one of those actors. You could go, you know, that that is brilliant character. You could cast that actor. So when you, um, when you don't get a recall or you don't get the role, it's not that you're terrible or that there's anything you could have done. It's just, you know, you, it's, it, it, there's just a chemistry involved. It's, um, it's very much, and I've used this a lot, but it is very much like falling in love with somebody. There's just chemistry there. There's no way somebody can give you a list of things to do that will then make them fall in love with you. You can't, you know, I can't come up with a list of things and then give that out to people and say, right, if you do all of these tasks, I will love, you know, I will romantically love you forever. And, and casting is a little bit like that in that, uh, in fact, it, well, not just casting, but just working with actors and, and kind of creating the, these families on screen or creating relationships on screen. It's always down to chemistry and these things that you can't quite articulate. And um, so, you know, it, uh, yeah, I kind of don't want to be saying to an actor, do it this way. You, you want an actor to use their instincts and present what they think is the best thing. And, and you sort of take it from there. Um, oh, see, I don't, know if I've, I don't know if I've managed to avoid your question actually yeah, there. But I, think, I think that's such a beautifully put answer to that question. And um, yeah, something that people should be keeping in mind for sure. Um, mm -hmm. So Lydia has asked, um, do you have any pet peeves during an audition? So anything that people should be um, avoiding doing? No, pet peeves, no, it's more of, well, it's, you know, I, I, I always expect my actors to be really well prepared and I would want them to have learned the lines. I suppose my biggest pet peeve is, uh, is a line learning thing that, that it's kind of, and I do appreciate that sometimes you get very short notice and sometimes there's a lot of dialogue and things like that, but it is the job of an actor to be able to kind of recite lines and learn lines and, and do it quickly. And there's so many different kind of reasons why you, you should be good at learning lines. Um, and again, it was one of the real inspirations for starting the acting habit, which, which was to supply actors with a piece of material every day. So they just got into this routine of learning lines every day so that by the end of certainly on the 21 day or by the end of the 21 days, the, the lines are just going in much more so easily because you've been doing it every day. And it's just like you're doing a proper workout. You're, you, you know, you're, you're using your brain and your memory every day. So, um, so yeah, I think in face to face auditions, for sure, it's, uh, you, you want an actor just to, um, yeah be, be kind of prepared and um but yeah no uh, peeves i mean I, 
yeah, don't, I never really like looking at all the negative side of things, but I think as long as an actor is kind of prepared um, and has really learned the lines, because it's when, they, when, when an actor walks in and they're not, they don't really seem to know much about anything. It's just like, it's such a waste of everybody's time then. You, you, you know, it's so unlikely that we're going to cast you or that you're going to impress a director if you've not taken the time to, to kind of really look at the project that, that you've been asked, um, you know, asked to come in for. Um, I mean, this is kind of my view because, and again, I work in mostly in film and I do, do the odd bit of TV every so often. Um, it could be different in commercials and things where, and theatre, I'm sure, where, you know, that, that's a slightly different way of doing things, I suppose. But I, I think with, with the kind of projects I work on, yeah, you just want an actor to, to be really well prepared off book and then come in and, um, yeah, do, do their bit. Great. Um, I'm getting quite a few questions about um, reaching out to cast and directors and if you had any tips around there. Um, somebody has asked if you um, took submissions direct from your website. Um, other people are asking if they can get in touch with you direct if they have if they don't have representation. So what's your take on on actors re reaching out individually? Yeah, yeah, I don't mind that at all. I, I, I mean, we're all different. You've got to kind of remember all casting directors are different and we all have our own ways of doing things but I like getting it um, I like getting emails from actors I don't mind at all um, and I will try and respond to as many as I can I don't know if anyone on here has ever sent me an email but if I, I sometimes do the thing where I, if anyone sent me an email mind you there's not everyone hasn't got their camera on but I try and respond to every email that I get but sometimes you just can't do that sometimes I'll be either really busy uh, or not busy and if I'm not busy the last thing I want to do is be saying I want to be playing with my kids or something instead and so it's kind of a, there's a weird thing so usually when I'm really busy is a good time for actors to be emailing me because I need actors at that time um, I think that if you're going to email me email me during office hours don't send weird emails at eight o'clock on a Friday night or, or you know eight o'clock on Christmas Eve or something it's kind of like by the time I get back to my computer and in a working mode that email will be so old it's just it's it's um, I won't really pay attention um so yeah I would always suggest try and email an, uh, any casting director during office hours and, and avoid certain rush times avoid Monday morning definitely avoid Friday afternoon um uh, because you know you're you're you you're trying to get to your weekend and trying to get things off your desk don't send emails at five or six o'clock at night again because it's just I'm just not going to be receptive to them so I think sometime during the middle of the day about 11 o'clock is a good time when uh, I've dealt with all the stuff in the morning and I'm kind of starting to look forward to lunch but I'll have a little mini break at about 11 o'clock in the morning that's probably a good time when I'm kind of receptive um, and yeah keep it short and keep it personal I don't like um, newsletters I suppose I don't like receiving something that I know has just been sent to a, a million other people I like and which is a bit um what is that egotistical I suppose it's a bit egotistical of me but I'd like a proper personal email they're the ones that I feel like I respond to more um yeah. as opposed to you know it, people can kind of come up with these really elegant looking um yeah newsletters but they're, they're so impersonal that I just think oh you, and I will try and respond to them but again I just think well you know you, you've spent this lots of time and it's brilliant doing this lovely newsletter but I feel less special if it just come if I just know it's been sent to everybody yeah. um but um so, so yeah i think personal emails and it is it's kind of like a job you know you do, sort of keeping contacts going with casting directors is part of an actor's job i think even if they've got an agent i would say even if you've got an agent you should maintain any relationships you have with casting directors and um uh you know so email them every so often and, and make sure you've got it in your diary that you've got to email people every few weeks or whatever and, and just kind of act on it don't don't um uh yeah treat it it, it, it is kind of part of the job. It's sort of, it might be an icky part of the job and people kind of go, oh, I hate networking or whatever. Or they think, oh, I've got an agent. I let my agent do that. But honestly, you, you know, you are in charge of your own career. And even if you've got a great agent, they are in charge of lots of other people's careers as well. And so you have to, um, yeah, I think you've got to kind of take control of it yourself a little bit. And it's only when, I would say, when you've got more job offers than you can actually do, then that's fine. Let your agent field all of those. But until then, maintain your your relationships with certain casting directors just ping them a quick email hey how are you doing and i get emails now from reasonably well-known casting directors that you think are you know you see on tv and they're doing really well but they'll still send me an email saying oh i've got coming up with to a quiet time or what's going on and how have you been or whatever and yeah. it's just um and i just think yeah it's good business it's um yeah it, 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 it's you know this business is a kind of a strange thing because it is it, it, it's so much fun and we do have really lovely relationships with people but it ultimately is business um so you, you have to just make sure you remember that and you make sure you, you keep 
your contacts alive, um, I would say. Yeah, yeah, great. Um, there's been a quite a few people who've asked about show reels, and obviously at the beginning we did say, well, you did say that um, that's something that maybe you don't gravitate towards, you know, all the time when you go in and looking for suggestions for things. Um, but there was two questions that I saw. So one was, what do you think about um, self tape businesses that create a self tape for you before you have your own footage? And then the other one was, if we don't have footage for a showreel yet, can we just pop up a self tape that we've recorded for something else? Yeah, I think I think casting directors now are starting to look. Uh, I mean, I think this you probably still get a bit of resistance from a certain kind of casting director that only wants to, to see a showreel. Um, but I think a lot of other casting people are kind of like, well, I, I personally I want to see something of the actor on camera. I want to see um, yeah. something, and I appreciate you may not have a great showreel. And like I said, I I. I probably was one of the only people that liked the, the montage at the beginning of a showreel. That was kind of what I wanted the showreel to be, just a quick montage of images of you on camera, what you look like, and then I want to kind of hear what you sound like as well. So I can get that from a cell tape. I won't sit and watch a cell tape all the way through, like I won't really sit and watch a showreel all the way through. Um, and sometimes I do get actors that send me an email going, oh, here's a, here's a cell tape I did for Dan Hubbard last week, you know, what's your feedback? And it's kind of like, why would I spend time watching a showreel that you've done for Dan Hubbard last week that's not a project I'm casting and, you know, give you feedback on it? It's, it's, um, it's like, I'm not going to do that. So I, um, uh, I will kind of watch little bits of it. Um, and in terms of those kind of companies, some are good and some are not as good. And, you know, I think a lot of people can, um, yeah, I, it's, yeah, you have to make your own decisions as to whether I, I'm a big fan of act, actors creating their own material and writing their own things and even filming their own things. And, um, and, and now we're starting to see that, um, you know, loads and loads of different actors coming, uh, suddenly becoming um, not popular or famous even. It's just that they're in charge of their own destinies and they've got their own production companies going and they, they're making short films and then they're making TV series and now, you know, they're getting big deals with big companies. Um, I'm a big fan of actors kind of doing that. So sometimes I think, I don't know how much some of these um, companies charge to kind of create a fake showreel, but if it's a, you know, if it's a fair whack, then possibly use that money with other actors and create your own things. And yeah. you'll learn so much by doing that, trying to create your own short film. Um, you, um, yeah, you, you'll learn far more doing that than paying somebody else to do it. But, um, but I, you know, there are some good companies out there, I'm sure that, that, um, that do good stuff. So you, again, just got to make your choices. Um, cool. But I think even just a really simple showreel or even a really simple thing like you to camera saying, hi, this is me and this is who I am and this is what I look like on camera and here I am, you know, that's enough for me. Um, so, uh, you know, and I can't listen, I can't also, I can't always talk for every casting director, obviously. We are, we are all different and some casting directors don't want access to email them. Um, you know, some casting directors insist on there being a showreel um, and all these kind of different things, but so we're all different. So I think I'm, I'm kind of a bit looser and maybe it is the way that I came into casting where it was really random and I'm not an actor. And so it's, um, I, I probably have a bit more, I'm, I'm probably a bit more in awe of actors than maybe somebody that went through drama school and kind of went through that whole process. I, I, I still don't really know how actors do it. I don't know anything about the theory of acting and I've kind of kept myself away from that. I don't want to peek behind the curtain. I just, um, you know, I really don't. I just like to, I, I just, I, you know, I watch actors and I just go, oh my God, how do you do that? Because I know how hard it is. It's, it's um, you know, it's, it's such a hard thing to do when having a camera pointed at you and, and then you, emote and be someone else and do different things it's, it's unbelievable so i don't want to know how um yeah i, I don't want to know how just anyway um uh, I've yes, got a to the question. yes that was um uh, we, we have to wrap up now because it is oh. um i i knew that because uh, we've never spoken before i knew you were going to be fabulous oh and thank you really um i could listen to you talk radio so i'm so i'm so glad that we had you and i hope that you all got something out of that and i totally agree i am absolutely in awe of actors um mm -hmm. and everything that you do because i definitely couldn't do it and yet you know casting is my life as well so um thank you so much and thank That's you awesome. for um so let's just remind everyone and um, what's your website so purocasting.com, yeah, puro, P-U-R-O, casting.com. Um, and then, yeah, have a little uh, yeah, fiddle around with some of the, anyway, have a look there. There's a whole thing actually on how to self-tape. There's a whole kind of section on how to self-tape. Actually, I should, probably should have a look at that as well, see if I need to update it. 
Um, yeah. yeah, have a look around there. There's, there's lots of stuff. And then there's all the acting habits stuff is kind of lives on that website as well. Amazing. Um, you can check us out. We've got loads of articles based around um, all of the topics that we've spoken about today and a ton more in the UK and the US and, you know, everywhere. Um, and that's backstage.com. Um, you can follow us on Twitter. And I really like to hear if you've enjoyed the session, if you've got any ideas for what else you'd like to see. Um, we've been doing this for nearly four months now. So, um, you know, if you have any more ideas of anything that I, we haven't been organizing them, please do send them my way because I'd love to have a look. Um, that's um, on Twitter, we're at Backstage. Um, on Instagram, we're at Backstage Cast. Um, you can follow me on Twitter as well. I'm at Hannah Casting. Um, Manuel, you're not on social media, are you? No, no, I use it, honestly. I, the acting habit is my social media because I'm on there kind of leaving comments and watching stuff, so I, I don't have time for the other for other social media so no I mean I think I've got a Twitter account but I've, I've never tweeted and I've never I've got an Instagram account my kids set them all up for me but I never um it's like you can set them up but I'm just not going to use them and uh, so yeah I don't I yeah I, I'm a bit like I said a bit of a dinosaur with that with that side of things I, I don't um yeah I keep away from those things but um but anyway we're all, all on the website and um, uh, so somebody's just asking me here um, his email's not on his website is there is there oh, yeah. You could use uh, yeah, just Manuel. Actually, you know what? Uh, yeah, I, oh, I tell you, it's Manuel at purocasting.com. So it's not really hard or anything, but you have to become a bit of a detective. I think sometimes when you're, I mean, I do this when I, when I'm trying to hustle for a job, I will go online and try and, um, again, I'm going to sound really stalkery at once again, but if there's a director I want to work with, or there's a producer or something, or there's a project you hear somehow, oh, there's this project's about to start, and they might need a, a casting director. I may not have all the information. It's not like somebody says, here's the name of the, here's the email address, and here, you, this is what you should say. I'll have to kind of go and Google and try and figure out someone's email address. And it's always a lot easier than you think. It's kind of a bit weird how you can kind of guess someone's email address and google a few different variations on it until you find a document that's like a real document with somebody's email address on it so um, anyway normally i would say you can find my email address really easily but anyway it's manuel at purocasting.com um, mm -hmm. great yeah, and don't all send them now please please don't send all the emails all in one great big flurry yeah, that is a really good tip because obviously we've been doing all of these and I think um, a lot of cast and directors are getting flooded afterwards. Just keep it, wait, you know, uh, email him at 11 o'clock in three weeks time because, <laughs> oh, not, don't all do that. But not, at night. not at night though, yes, yes, but 11 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, oh yes, yeah, yeah, in the morning. Um, we have recorded this session, so if you wanted to take a look again, it's going to be on our YouTube, which I you just have to Google backstage YouTube. I don't know what the handle is, oops. Um, and then we will also be running an article just summarizing all of the best bits that you have imparted on us, which we're very grateful for. You can try and get Titan in there, Titan of, of casting. Yeah. yeah. For if you, if you want to use veteran, listen, go for it as well. But Titan. No, be I like Titan. And that's what I think you are 100%. <laughs> so thank you so much. I hope that we get to meet one day in person. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, thank you guys for watching. Cheers. Thank you all. Cheers. Bye. 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 Bye.